Hello, I'm Rebecca Flaherty, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use your free cell sheet template for Procreate. You can download yours for free either from my Pattern Makers Toolkit, previously my freebie library, or if you're not a member yet, you can join for free and it will be included in your welcome email. I've just released my latest Skillshare class, which is all about making simple cell sheet templates for your surface pattern design portfolio. Although I use Photoshop for making the cell sheet templates in the class, I mentioned that you can just as easily use other software like Illustrator or Affinity if that's something you're more familiar with. The thing is though, I know a lot of you work exclusively in Procreate, and while it's not impossible to put a template like that together in Procreate, it would be very tricky to get everything precisely laid out and aligned, just simply because that's not really what Procreate is designed for. It would just be too fiddly. However, I didn't want my Procreate friends to miss out on all the fun, so I put together a template in Photoshop and then exported it layer by layer into Procreate, where I adapted it and created a multi-page cell sheet template for you to export cell sheets from right within Procreate. At this point, if you have no idea what a cell sheet even is and why you would want to use one, then you could check out this video here, which covers all of that first. So let's first of all, have a look at how to open the file on your iPad after you've downloaded it. If you're already a member, you can go to the Pattern Makers Toolkit over on my website, enter the password and download the file to your iPad. By the time you're watching this, this will say download now instead of coming soon. If you're not already a member, you can join for free using the link in the, this video description and the download link will be in your welcome email. Find the download file in your files app and it will say zip at the end. You just need to tap on it to unzip the file and then you can tap on the file again to open the document in Procreate. The first thing you'll notice, which you might not have seen before in Procreate, is this little bar at the bottom and this is called Page Assist. In this document, each of these groups displays as a separate page, so we can toggle between those by tapping them down here in the page assist or by toggling these groups here. This bottom group here with the colour bars and the text, that's set as the background, so that will always be on display. So let's start with this group here that says one block. This might be at the top or bottom of your document, depending on which way around it was when I saved it, but you want the one that says one block and you'll have one big square of grey there. And I'm going to hide the other two for now. You could use this for either a whole page of pattern or bring in an illustration. We'll start by bringing in a pattern. So I'm going to go out into my gallery and I'm going to go into this one here and open up a pattern file that you have in your gallery. I'm going to swipe down with three fingers and I'm going to tap copy all. And we can come back out here, go back into the one that I just downloaded. And then we're going to tap on this layer here that says unlock to fill and on that layer we're going to swipe down with three fingers again and we're going to tap paste. Make sure you have your interpolation method here set to nearest neighbour, that's the one we want to use for this whole cell sheet document. I'm going to leave this at this scale and I'm just going to snap it to the top there and then I'm going to duplicate this layer again, tap to transform and we will snap it to the bottom of this tile there. Just zoom in to make sure there's no gaps and that everything's lined up there and that's looking okay. So now we can pinch to merge these two layers together. And now what we want to do is to clip this down over that rectangle. So we're going to tap on the layer and make it a clipping mask. And now that is going to clip down to that rectangle there. If you want to change the scale of your pattern, that is also possible. But I do want to preface this section by saying you will start to lose image quality and we might also get some seams appearing just because of how image transformation works in Procreate. You can always give this next part a go and see what you think. So let's hide this for a second and I'm going to tap back onto this layer here and I'm going to swipe down again with three fingers because we still have that in the clipboard and tap paste. So I'll drag this up a little bit further and we'll try it at this sort of scale and see how it goes. So I'll bring it up to there first and it's snapped to the edge of this box. So now we can swipe to duplicate and then we can drag this over here and snap it to the edge there. And then I'm gonna predict that as we zoom in, there's probably gonna be a bit of a gap there, wherever it was. I think on this occasion, we're okay. So let's merge those two together now, and then we can duplicate that, bring it down again and snap it to the bottom there, make sure it's snapped to it. 
And again, let's zoom in and check there's no gap there. I think on this occasion, we're okay because we're using nearest neighbor that will minimize that. You tend to get that more when you use interpolation methods like bilinear or bicubic. So hopefully if you stick to using nearest neighbor, you shouldn't have that problem with the seams and gaps. But if you do just flatten those layers, duplicate them and those transparencies will stack up and that will get rid of those seams there. So the other thing you'll notice is that the image quality will start to deteriorate a little bit as you transform and move things around and change the scale. But on the whole, when you're zoomed out to 100% sort of size, you likely aren't gonna notice that difference there and it's not gonna be a big problem. So now we can move on to the color swatches and the text. You can actually turn the color swatches off if you don't want to use those on yours, you can just have that part turned off. I like to have mine on because I think it looks nice with a row of color swatches at the top. So to fill these with color, we'll just open this group and you just need to color pick some colors from your document. So we'll start with the pink and then tap on this layer here and tap fill layer. Then we'll grab the green. I've labeled these to help you figure out which side is which. So you've got, obviously got left is the far one and then right is the far one, this side, and then the ones in between are the ones in between. So we'll just fill all these. So that's how to set your color swatches at the top. The next thing we're gonna come on to is the text. So we'll start with the pattern name, just tap on the layer, tap edit text, and then you can triple tap on this. That will highlight it all. And then you can type in a new pattern name. I tend to leave this in all caps just cause it fills the space a bit better. So we'll just give this one a quick name, something imaginative like flower pattern. Then you can add an SKU number. If you want to know more about what an SKU number is and how to set up a simple numbering system, you can check out this video, which I'll link to in the description. You can also add the dimensions of your pattern tile here if you want to, or you can turn that layer off if you don't want to put the dimensions on there. You can turn any of these layers off that you don't want to use. You need to change that part there to your name. So you can edit text, double tap on there delete that and put your name in there and then you would do the same and just add your name and contact details over here having your contact details on a cell sheet is super important because these cell sheets will often get saved to an art buyer's hard drive and detached from the original email if you've not included your email on this document they won't be able to email you back and tell you they want to license it if you have a ready-made logo you can insert that here instead of this text layer and you can also change any of these fonts to something you prefer that suits your branding better as well now we'll take a quick look at how to use the other layers and then we'll have a look at how to export this if you want to bring in one big illustration then i would just turn this off and then this layer here you need to unlock this and then you can fill that with a color the reason i've locked a lot of these layers is just so they don't get accidentally moved or nudged around or moved out of position if you want to change the color on them you just need to unlock them first so we'll go out into our gallery and i'm going to grab an illustration from in here so i'm going to turn off the background layer and bring this in without a background so i'm going to swipe down with three fingers copy all go back out to our gallery come into this one here make sure i'm on the right layer this one here called unlocked fill swipe down with three fingers and then i'm going to tap paste then i can just position that on there and then this layer here i'm just going to grab a color from my swatches and then we'll tap to fill that layer and then you can then again go and pull fresh colors from there changing your details and that would be now ready to export so the layer with two blocks can be used for things like showing off either the same pattern in two different scales or in two different colorways you just bring in your pattern as before swiping down with three fingers to copy all in the pattern tile document and then coming back into this one swiping down with three fingers pasting and then tiling the tiles over it and then clipping them down over these two blocks here and then i've included this group here with four blocks this one you could use if you have a mini collection or a mix of patterns and illustrations. You just fill them in the same way as we did before, copying your pattern tile and then repeating over these boxes, merging it into one layer and then clipping it down over the grey box. Or you can bring in an illustration with a transparent background and then change the colour of the box to behind it to fill it. Remember you would need to unlock these before you can fill the boxes like this. Now we'll have a look at how to export. This document is currently US letter size and 300 dpi. So it's perfect for printing if you wanted to do that. Just save it as a JPEG, PNG or PDF and print as you normally would. If you want to share these online, either to pitch in an email or to upload to your portfolio, which I suspect is gonna be the case for most of us, you might want to export these at a lower resolution, especially if you're uploading it to a public portfolio. 
High res images will make your website slower to load, which is a thing that affects SEO ranking. And also high res images are too tempting for naughty art stealers to steal. We could reduce the resolution of this document here, but we'd have to remember to undo it afterwards or we'd have ruined our whole template and we'd have to start all over again next time. So the safest way to do it is to swipe down with three fingers in this document, copy all, then come out into your gallery, create a new document up here and choose clipboard. This will open up a flattened version of what you just copied and now we can just re reduce the resolution of this one instead. So come up here to Canvas Actions and we are going to go down to tap on Canvas and tap Crop and Resize. Up here on Settings, we're going to tap on Resample Canvas. That will lock in your dimensions here and then we can change the DPI to 72. And then for the width here, I would change it to something around a thousand pixels wide. I'm going to change mine to 1080, which is the perfect width for Instagram. And then you can tap done. These images are perfect for sharing on Instagram as long as you hide your email address. The only reason I'm suggesting you hide it is if you're then opening yourself up to getting spammed if you've got that somewhere public like Instagram. You might also want to turn that layer off if you've got an open access portfolio website. If you're at this stage like me and you've not hidden those layers already, that's okay. We can carry on and then fix that in just a moment. So once we've resized it, we can tap done. That will crunch the image down and this is nice low resolution 72 dpi now to hide this bit down here we can just grab a white and we can just paint over that to get rid of it if we don't want our email address on there so now we've got a nice small low res image optimized for sharing online and now you can export this in the normal way as a jpeg or a png for sharing online i hope that you find this template useful in either your surface pattern design or illustration journey if you want to know more about cell sheets you can watch this video here it's a free lesson from my latest skillshare class which is all about making multifunctional templates like this in photoshop and then integrating it into your workflow the link for that video is below in the description along with everything else i've mentioned here today if you want to see the full Skillshare class, you'll get an extra 30 days free when you join using the link in my description. Have you joined the Pattern Makers Toolkit yet? It's like a Patreon group, except better because it's free. You'll get access to the Pattern Makers Toolkit, which is the resource library where I keep all my free templates, palettes, and brushes. Every month, you'll get a new freebie delivered straight to your inbox, along with early access links to some of my YouTube tutorials and drawing challenge prompts. You'll also get 10% off everything in my Etsy store and I only ever send out one email a month because one is quite enough and none of us like being bombarded with daily emails. That's all from me this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this every week. Have fun, stay creative and I will see you soon.